If you remember nothing of what I say, there's two themes I would like for you to take home with you. The first, of course, is carry the load. And the second one is the cause is greater than I. I knew two of the guys helping me because they'd been in my squad, or I'd been in their squad. Uh, but the other two, I just, they were just Marines. And I said, you and you, come with me. And I told them what I wanted them to do. First time I went in and joined the Marine Corps, uh, now I'm five foot six. I filled out the paper and gave it to the Marine recruiter. And he didn't even look at the paper, he just looked at me and said, I can't take you. And I said, why? And he said, you're too short. Because they had a height requirement of 5'8 or better, and you had to meet the 5'8 in order to get in the Marine Corps. So I couldn't go. In about January, February 43, they took the height requirement off and it would accept people less than 5'8. And he came to the farm and looked me up, the recruiter did. Flamethrowers didn't come out, actually, until January 1944. And I remember this great big wooden crates coming into the company, and we saw them, but we had no idea what was in them. So we broke the crates open, and in there was this piece of equipment none of us had ever seen before. It did have a manual with it, but the manual only told you how to take it apart, put it together, and the part numbers, what fuel to use in it. So we finally ended up with diesel fuel and 82 octane gasoline. So he trained us to shoot at about 15 yards on the ground in three to four second bursts and make a great big orange flame ball and it would roll. And we could roll that into the face of a cave or uh, into a pillbox and it would go through the front aperture of that pillbox through that hole. Two Marines I'd selected to give me protection that day when I would be trying to get to a pillbox to get flame in it, sacrificed their lives that day protecting mine. In four hours of time, they shot at me with machine guns and rifles and threw grenades at me, but I was never touched. There's got to be a reason why I was saved, and the guy right beside me, he lost his life. Why did, why did he have to go and I didn't? I don't understand that, still don't. I was still on Guam when uh, the notice came through that I was to be shipped back to the States. We were receiving the medal on the White House lawn. There were 13 of us. Well, they call you up. You walk up to the president and you're standing eyeball to eyeball with him. There was one word about halfway through the citation, and it said he went forward alone. I didn't. I wasn't alone. I had Marines supporting me. I could not have accomplished my mission without Marine support. It is good to see so many Americans participating in this movement all across the country. They recognize the significance of such a sacrifice and walk alongside their neighbor in a gesture that says, the sacrifice of your loved one matters and we will never forget. Now, working as a veterans counselor, I dealt with a tremendous number over the years of those who had been lost on active duty. So I was always conscious of the fact that this person sitting at my desk, this mother, is there because she lost a son. And that always had a tremendous impact on me. 
I'd been invited to speak to this senior citizens group in Parkersburg, West Virginia. One man stayed after everybody had left the hall, and he was sitting just a few rows back and sitting there with his head down, and he was, I heard him walking toward me, and I turned around and there he stood. Tears were rolling down his cheeks. And the only words he said to me were, Dad's cry too. And so we sat there and shared together and cried together and thought, we have got to do something to help those people adjust because they have something to share with each other. Such sacrifices have inspired and motivated me to form up a organization to erect in every state in this union Gold Star Family Memorial Monument to honor those families who gave more than any of the rest of us. When we dedicated the first Gold Star Family Memorial Monument in West Virginia, when we first started, I decided that if, if some city wanted to do a monument, I would donate the first $5,000. That lasted for a couple of years, but it just started coming so rapidly, I couldn't afford, I couldn't afford to do that anymore. On October the 2nd, 2013, we did the very first one in the country. We thought we were done. Your presence is truly good, and your presence strokes the embers of hope. And it's going to take organizations like yours and ours and others to bring us all back together, make us back to true America that we all love and we all want to be. Well, I have said many, many times, I owe back much more than I will ever be able to give. I appreciate always to be able to get the word out and maybe encourage somebody to do something that they never dreamed they would do for the benefit of others.